Hey friends, for today's video I want to talk about cruelty and the concept of cruelty leaking and uh, where do we start? I kind of want to talk about cringe. So ContraPoints has a great video about cringe where she does a whole breakdown and study of a specific person whose name is Chris Chan who you know is kind of not very self-aware and kind of uh, is very earnest and not self-aware and so they get mocked very easily and often and there's this whole community that sprung up as Chris Chan fans who you know so this person she she is what what does she do she's like a you know she makes comics and she has a blog and she's just kind of she's like a human person with a kick me sign on their back and people are very eager to kick them and um there is this community that sprung up pretty much with the intent of, of harassing this person and, and nudging them and sort of like getting them to die. It's like um it's like zoo they, they treat this person like a zoo animal and they you know they they disturb her and annoy her and she's almost too naive to realize that they're playing her and so she plays along very earnestly. And there, uh, there's a version of this that is happening in Singapore right now, like with a local person who is kind of known for being cringy in the same way, like they're just sort of embarrassing themselves all the time. And people are facilitating that and encouraging that. They are encouraging this person to make a fool of themselves for their entertainment. And talking about this is difficult because, you know, it's it's so easy to... It's so easy to scold right and i don't want to be a scold and i think i mean i could make a whole separate video about scolding you know i have a tweet that's like my philosophy is no scolding because scolding just doesn't work you know it 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 creates this adversarial relationship and i think adversarial relationships in general are just not not good at achieving the sort of um positive sum beneficial outcome and a lot of people, are they don't know, it's not clear to themselves even whether they are playing adversarial games because they think it's the best way to, to play those games or whether they just, you know, just doing what seems natural and it's what they've inherited from the culture around them and so on. I know I'm being a bit vague. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be a good video, but I'm just going to keep going. Um... Uh, yeah, so I want to discourage people from being cruel to other people. And the idea here is that even if the other person deserves it, they deserve cruelty for whatever reason. Maybe if they've done horrible shit, maybe they've done crimes, maybe they've been abusive. Um, even so, my belief, and you know, I guess part of why this is difficult to talk about is because um, it, some moral positions are very easy to talk about. As in, it's easy to hold the position in in uh, in words, right? To speak of a noble position to hold. But where it really matters is how you act, right? And I try my best to not be cruel to other people. And as I say that, I realize, you know, there's... I'm kind of thinking about, about vegans and how... Um, you know, again, there's a whole spectrum of people who are vegan... And there are a lot of people who are quietly vegan, right? Like, they just, they feel that they don't want to eat animal products. They don't want to, you know, they just feel that it's a personal choice for them. And that's what they think is how life should be lived. And then there's, like, the scoldy vegans who, and the preachy vegans who kind of go around telling other people that they are bad people for eating meat and that they should be ashamed of themselves and that they are perpetuating cruelty. And, uh, you know, I again, I don't want to, I'm not vegan, you know, or vegetarian even. But, uh, you know, it's, um, you, the attention tends to get focused on the scoldy people, you know, and, uh, there's this, there's this Slate Star Codex blog post called, uh, the Toxoplasma of Rage. And it talks about how there's this organization called Vegan Outreach, and they are really, you know, uh, mature and sensible and they seem to be kind and thoughtful and they are like you know don't don't get into fights don't preach at people don't don't kind of be difficult like just here if people are curious to understand here's how you can talk to them in a way that's non-confrontational blah 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 it's very you know if if you met someone from there you would probably think they're a wonderful person 
and so on. But like most of the world doesn't know about vegan outreach. Most people tend to know about PETA. And if you don't know what PETA is, you know, I, I almost don't want to spoil it for you. But like um, PETA is just this very loud, obnoxious organization that pulls all kinds of weird stunts that, you know, um, the best good faith read you can have of them is that they're just trying to draw attention they're trying to cause a spectacle to draw attention to the cause even if a lot of people are going to react negatively to it and the, the idea there is that you know the cause is so um obscure that any attention is good attention because reasons and there are similar dynamics that play out in i mean so that explains a lot of the media and the news, right? Outrage clicks and so on. And uh, I I just wanted to make a video, I guess, about cruelty and being mean to people and insulting people. And, you know, I, I, I can imagine how this perspective might be bait for a certain kind of, oh, you know, you're so privileged, you're being, you're being centrist and you're like not taking sides. Um, I don't know if it's that straightforward, you know, I, I do have opinions, I do have views about how I would like the world to be, I just also have a long-term strategy about how I think, what I think is most effective as a method of persuading people to follow me on that vision, right? And I believe that we need for whatever vision we have you know even if it's just i want to build a cathedral right or i want to build a school you want to just do something you i believe that we should make it fun and exciting and and interesting and and nourishing to be a part of that vision right i really don't like this trend and i'm not going to say it's like the way the world is i think it's just some people are like that and they get the the lion's share of the attention I don't believe that social progress should happen in a in a miserable way. You know, I don't believe that social justice should be pursued with people being miserable. And I know, I know that people who are in pain, people who are suffering from injustice, they don't have the privilege of tempering their utterances with niceness. And, and you know, I know that I, I'm aware of the arguments against, you know, model minorities and and nice moderates and all those yeah i know and yet you know so like I, I think we can price that in i think we can be aware that like you know nice uh moderate perspectives can be kind of lackadaisical and not do much work and not whatever but like you know again so it's like with with people who are trying to make the world a better place they are a subset of all people most people don't give a shit I mean, you know, again, it depends on who you're talking to and how you want to frame it. But like the vast majority of people are just going about their lives and they're busy and they're tired and they're frustrated and they just don't want to be scolded. Even if there's, even if you have a legitimate reason to scold them, like scolding will not win them over, you know? And I believe that for, for us to, to make any kind of progress, we have to win people over. We have to make things become the, the obvious right good kind thing to do and i think there's a quote somebody mentioned that's like um the role of the artist or the activist is to make the revolution irresistible right it's like you just you make people want to do it and i want to end this in 10 minutes and i want to talk about cruelty still cruelty right very often people receive cruelty from the world from their peers sometimes from, from their parents from teachers from whoever and it becomes learned it's negative reinforcement right it's i don't want you to do that stop that i'm going to be cruel to you until you stop doing that thing and it's it's just not effective i i i might have to make a separate video about that but what i think is effective is positive reinforcement right you figure out what you want and you encourage that you encourage people to share good things you encourage people to do what is pro-social what is you know talk about talk about the art and literature that you want to talk about you know create the scene that you want to see encourage what it is that you want to see and a lot of people don't believe that that's possible right so they, they then resort to negative reinforcement again because they, they they try a bit of positive reinforcement and it doesn't seem to work very well you know it's like good news bad news travels faster than good news and 
that's true but in my experience i feel and i feel that if you want to play the long game and you commit for the long haul the small handful of allies that you develop you know the relationships you build with other good people it becomes very powerful and strong like a like a nexus of goodness and you know like uh i've said before elsewhere that so this is kind of what star wars dark side and light side sort of is about and like the seductiveness of the dark side is that you can accumulate a lot of power very fast, right? You can become, you can win all the fights by playing dirty. But the failing of the dark side is that it's the side without love, it's the side without friends, it's the side without trust. And anybody who's sort of like a mob boss who has accumulated power, the, the sword of Damocles hangs over their head, right? You never know, you have to watch your back all the time. You never know which of your lieutenants is going to want to cut your throat because, you know, they don't believe in honor or whatever they their their morality is is what it is and again yeah that we can go into hours of conversation conversation about that because you could say that you know you try and you you can't be naive about trying to build something good and assume that there are no bad actors in that space that's another problem it's another conversation but broadly i just wanted to speak for a bit about the idea that when we are cruel to our enemies, even if they deserve it, that cruelty leaks into us and we become to ourselves people who are cruel. And that distorts our self-image in an unpleasant way. And so it's worthwhile being kind to people and loving to people. And, and, and you mean you have to, you have to, you know, we have limited time and energy and resources and so we, we can't afford typically to be perfectly loving, kind to everybody in the universe. But that doesn't mean that where we cannot be kind, we should be cruel, right? We should be as kind as we can. And then when we are at our limits, we should stop. And that's how you have boundaries. And you'd be like, that's all I can do for today, sorry. And then move on, right? But like, you don't have to be cruel. And I say that again, because I, I witness good people unthinkingly being cruel to others. And worst of all, being cruel to themselves, right? And that's something that I'm sure I still do it in some level, right? I'm, I'm sure that there's some part of me, I've, I feel like I've made a lot of progress on this front and I've kind of stripped away a lot of my cruelty towards others and quite a bit of cruelty towards myself. But sometimes I'm still hard on myself in a way that's not productive, that's not useful or effective. It's just it's just habit, right? It's, it's intoxicating. Like being cruel feels powerful and power is intoxicating. And, and in that way, you know, people who feel relatively powerless conduct themselves in a way that makes them feel powerful and you know every tyrant every authoritarian tyrant claims to be fighting for the oppressed right they never they, they claim that they have they don't have much power and that they are just barely keeping the forces of evil at bay and so on so yeah that's just something to think about um let me know what you your experience of navigating cruelty has been and that uh,